Yeah, look, in today's lecture, I will talk to you about uh, steady-state error in digital control systems. If you remember from our feedback systems course, one of the most important aspects of uh, control system performance is steady-state error or steady-state performance. Okay, so we generally look at the behavior when time goes to infinity instead of what happens between uh, the transients. Okay, so in the steady-state error, the fundamental theorem, uh, the concept that we use is the final value theorem. Okay, if you remember in time domain or continuous time domain, the final value theorem is this limit as t goes to infinity x of t is equal to limit s s goes to zero s times x of s where x of s is the Laplace transform x of t. If this limit exists, okay, it's important, then there is an equality. But sometimes we have a non-convergent sequence, okay, such as x of t or non-convergent signal that this won't be equal to each other, or this may not be equal to each other, even if you compute this limit, this is not equal to the final value of x of t. Okay, so what is the final value term for discrete time systems? It is very similar. Okay, limit as k goes to infinity, x of k, x of k is a discrete time sequence, is equal to limit when z goes into 1, 1 minus z to power minus 1 times x of z, or we can write it in a different format. This is equal to z is going to 1, z minus 1 divided by z, x of z, where x of z is the z transform of x of k. Okay, so as I told you uh, in the continuous time case, similarly, if x of k is a convergent sequence, if this limit exists, we have this equality. If x of k goes to infinity, this limit in the right side, which depends on z, may or may not go to infinity. Okay, so final tail theorem is valid when you have a limit in time domain. Okay, so let's talk about how we can use this theorem to compute steady state performance or uh, analyze state performance of a digital control system. Okay, so this is a typical digital control system. Okay, we have a, a plant, as you can see, we have a, a discrete time transfer function, z of h, okay, which has a combined transfer function expression g of s, we have a discrete time sequence a g of z, uh, we have a sampling here, here we only sample the error, okay, so this is a reference signal, uh, for analysis purposes, we here, as you can see, we sample the reference signal, similarly, we can also sample uh, to obtain y of k uh, to outputs, okay, and here I sample uh, uh, the signal which goes into the uh, difference separator or like the negative feedback part, which will be critical when analyzing the digital control systems. Okay, so what is error? So error in general is the error between output and the input. Okay, but sometimes we still have something here, such as h of s, h of c, but these are the like sensor dynamics and uh, technically we assume that uh, at the steady state error, the sensor dynamics does not affect our performance because this is where we design or calibrate our system. Okay, so for the steady state error, what we look at is this. Okay, important thing is we want e of t or e of k, which is technically better, to go to zero as time goes to infinite. This is the core point. We want a of k, let's say k, to go to zero as k is going to infinite. This is the whole point of uh, steady state performance zero. If it's not zero, we want this to be as small as possible. Okay, so let's analyze E of C. Okay, so let's clean this. So what is E of C? Okay, so E of C equal to, because we already derived that. Okay, so let's go that. E of Z is equal to R of Z minus uh, e of z, okay, so this is a discrete time sequence, okay, times discretized version of this, okay, so what's the discrete time version of this? You know that g of z times this is g of z. g of z is the discretization of zero order hold and the plant, okay, or we can write that that g of z is equal to z transform of g of s, okay, good. So once we have that, a of z is equal to simply r of z 1 over 1 plus gc of z times g of z. g of z is the control that we control, 
and G of G Z, G C of C is the controller, and G of C is uh, technically the discrete span transfer function. Okay, so from this perspective, okay, I think uh, before going into like deeper details, it's kind of easy to see that we want this to be big or possibly infinity when it matters in terms of state state performance because this is the error we want it to be as small as possible okay so so what we call gc times g of c is g o l z okay one plus g o l z o l z is the open loop or feed forward transfer function of the, the closed loop feedback control system okay so what is g o l c here it's easy okay because we have everything on the on the feed forward line okay we just uh, multiply them, but in general, G O L Z is simply equal to, okay, G O L Z is equal to one, not one, of course, F of Z divided by E of Z. Okay, so the dynamics from the error signal to the feedback term, which is here, okay, because we are technically uh, investigating the uh, error, and error depends on R, of course, and, uh, and F. Okay, so G all of C is the uh, transfer function from the error signal, discretized error signal, uh, to the discretized, technically, uh, version of the uh, signal that goes into the main negative feedback operation. Okay, so this is the basic idea, and we will try to analyze this uh, from uh, different perspectives. Okay, good. So let's go and let's uh, analyze this. Okay, good. So let's assume that our input is R of K is equal to U of K, which is the unit step input. Okay, so we know that R of Z is equal to 1 over 1 minus Z to power minus 1, or Z over Z minus 1. Okay, now let's analyze state state error. Okay, so what is state state error? Error state state is equal to limit when z is going to 1. Okay, so 1 minus z to power minus 1 times e of c. So what is e of c? Let's say e of c. And this is equal to limit when z is going to 1, 1 minus z to power minus 1 times 1 over 1 plus. G O L Z. Okay, so I made a mistake, sorry for that. G O Z, of course, times R of Z. That's good, because E of Z is technically, let's show here, is equal to R of Z times uh, 1 over 1 plus G O of Z. Okay, that's good. So let's analyze it. Error steady state is equal to limit when Z is going to 1. 1 minus c to power minus 1. What is R of c? 1 over 1 minus c to power minus 1. As you can see, this will cancel each other. Times 1 over 1 plus g o l z. Okay, this is the limit. So it is technically equal to error state state. Okay, 1 over 1 plus limit g o l. Okay, so not that. Limit when z is going to 1. G O L Z. That's it. Okay, that's good. So what is that? Okay. Uh, so we know one. Uh, so what we want is, when Z is going to one, we want this to be big as much as possible. Okay. So there are two cases. This can be constant, or it can be infinite. Okay. So when it is constant, okay, G O L one is equal to constant, let's call it KDC, I call it DC gain, okay, because it's the DC gain of the system. Error state state is equal to 1 over 1 plus KDC. Okay, so when KDC is constant, it's uh, clear that error state state is not equal to 0. When uh, KDC goes to infinity, then error state state goes to 0. Okay, that's good. So it can be zero or it can be non-zero. Okay, let's look at this. So let's analyze it again. Error state state is equal to one over one plus. Okay, what is G O L non-limit? Let's say let's write the limit also. 
okay limit when z is going to one g o l z okay that's it so let's analyze the cases okay when g o l one is constant and it's equal to kdc okay then uh, error state state is equal to one over one plus kdc and we call this system as the system is type zero system okay it's a type zero system okay uh, and type zero systems under uh, unit step input has a constant state state error okay and uh, it can be defined by kdc it's also called kp which is static uh, gain error constant but it's not important to name the idea is uh, you look at the dc gain which is uh, equal to kdc or kp it doesn't matter it's equal to one or one plus kdc so constant state state error for type zero systems okay so uh, the other cases gol1 can go to infinity okay so if this goes to infinity, as you can see, error state state is equal to zero. And these are type positive systems or type n, which n is greater than zero. So uh, your, if your system is a zero type, type zero system, it has a constant state state error. You can have a control and state state error by increasing KDC gain, which is your, in your control, of course. But if your system is a type positive system, I know I will talk about in a couple of uh, slides later, then your state state error is zero, which is of course good for uh, tracking purpose. Very good. Okay, so how we can define the type of a system? So, so in continuous time cases, if, if you remember, okay, so g of s, we write this in this form, okay, s to the power n, g d c s, okay. So uh, we technically remove the S integrators from the transfer function. Okay, so now uh, this is not good, okay. So what we do is we uh, remove the S uh, integrators from the uh, transfer function. We call other part K, GDC or G bar, it doesn't matter. Okay, technically integrators like uh, one to the power S terms are isolated from the other part transfer function and n defines the type of the system. For digital control systems, technically integrator is cumul accumulator uh, and it is associated with uh, z to the power minus or one or uh, z minus one, okay. G of z, we write this in this form, z, to the, z minus one to the power n times g d c z, okay. So, uh, technically, g d c one is constant, okay, or uh, which is equal to k d c. We assume that because we isolated all of the parts which goes to zero or uh, infinity blows up when z is going to one, okay. And n defines the type of the system, okay. That's it, and I think that's uh, very uh, simple and understandable, okay. So for unit step response, uh, if type and is equal to zero, error state state is equal to one over one plus k d c. When n is greater than zero, error state state is equal to zero. And unit step is technically the most important input uh, for uh, control systems, digital uh, or not digital, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we have space, that's good. So what is the next important input, which is of course unit ramp, okay? So unit ramp, where r of k is equal to k times u of k, u of k is the step input, and r of z is equal to z to power minus one, one minus z to power minus one squash. Okay, so let's analyze the state error. Error state state is equal to limit when z is going to one, okay, one minus z to power minus one. This is coming from the final theorem, r of z, times one over one plus G O L of Z. Okay, that's good. This is equal to limit when Z is going to one. That's good. Okay, one minus Z to the power minus one. Let's write R of Z first, Z to the power minus one. Okay, one minus Z to the power minus one squared. Okay, that's good. 
uh, that's it, I guess. It is equal to 1 over. Now, let's write g all of cell in uh, the type form. 1 over z minus 1 to the power n, g, d, c, z. That's it. Okay, good. So let's analyze it a little bit. As you can see, uh, this will cancel out. We will have z to the power minus n, 1 minus z minus 1. Uh, so we will have a simplified expression. Let's clean other parts instead of going to a new, new page. Okay, let's rewrite in the power of z only to get a better idea. Okay, so let's change it to the object razor, doesn't matter. Okay, and let's change the color to see that we are uh, technically doing the name analysis. So error that state is equal to limit when z is going to 1. Okay, what's happening? This is equal to 1 over. Okay, that's good. So let's clean it. Okay, so let's, okay. Z minus 1. Okay, if you get that, times 1 over uh, 1 plus 1 over z minus 1 to the power n, g dc of z. Okay, that's now I can clean that. That's good. So I just rewrite uh, everything in z parentheses. Okay, good. So what I will do is I will distribute this inside of the transfer function. Okay, Aristotle state is equal to limit z is going to 1. And it is equal to 1 over z minus 1 plus 1 over z minus 1 n to the power minus 1 g dc of z. Okay, so now we have a much simpler expression. Uh, when z is going to 1, this will go to 0, right? It doesn't affect the result. So it is equal to limit, 1 over limit, z is going to 1. 1 over z minus 1 to the power m minus 1, g dc 1. Okay, so this is constant. Okay, so the main thing that defines steady state error is this. This is constant, of course, it has an effect, but so whether it goes to 0, infinity, or other case, this will be defined by this part. Okay, so let's clean that and uh, try to understand the details. Okay, that's good. So I have steady state error. I don't even need to write everything. I'm just looking at the cases. Okay, error steady state. This is for unit RAM input. Okay, let's analyze the system. Type n is equal to zero. Okay, it's zero. Uh, this is constant. It doesn't matter. Zero means that n is equal to zero. So this is z to the power minus one. Uh, z to the power z minus 1 to the power minus 1, it will go to here. So what it will do, it will go to, this part will go to 0, right? Exactly. Okay, this will go to 0. So when this is going to 0, okay, 1 over 0 is going to infinity. Okay, now it is interesting. Infinity. It's good, right? So it means that for this system, uh, for a type 0 system, if your input is in a input, your steady state goes to infinity. So if we draw the behavior, it is like something like that. OK, this is my ramp input, and this is my output. Of course, the error is going to infinity. OK, so for type 0 systems, if your input is unit ramp, your steady state is infinity, which is kind of not acceptable. Okay, it's kind of bad. So type 0 systems are bad for uh, RAM-like inputs, of course, which goes infinite. It cannot keep track of with the inputs. Okay, so when it is type n is equal to 1, this will be equal to 1, right? Because n is equal to 1, z to the power minus 1, 0, it's going to technically, uh, this will cancel out. Error state state is equal to 1 over gdc1, which is equal to 1 over kdc. So we have a constant state state error, which can be controlled by increasing the gain of the system is in general. OK, so if we look at type n is greater than, let's take a 2 or 3, it doesn't matter. So if you look at that, this limit will go to infinity for any n that is greater than 1. When it's infinity, error state state will go to 0. 
Okay, so the idea is very, very similar. Okay, now we have one more input, but I will not go into all of the details. I'll just uh, skip some of the steps and uh, find some results. Okay, so we are done with the unit ramp input, which is unit acceleration or unit quadratic input. Okay, that's good. So what is unit quadratic input? Okay, r of k is equal to 1 over 2 k square u of k. If you look at r of c, r of c is something like that plus e to power minus one. Okay, it's impossible to memorize. Just look at the tables, one mass cube. Okay, so if we find errors at the state, we will see that it's equal to one over limit, c is going to one, one over z minus one, n minus two, g, d, c of z. Okay, which is technically very similar to the unit term case. The only difference is n is equal to two. Okay, so, when n is equal to 0 or n is equal to 1, type 0, type 1 systems, less than 2, it's easy to see that error state is going to infinity because in both cases, this will go to 0. When it's going to 0, 1 over 0, it's going to infinity, of course. Let's clean that. Okay, that's good. So when n is equal to 2, n is equal to 2, this will be technically equal to 1. So error state state will be constant and it's equal to one over k d c. Okay, that's good. So when your n is equal to like three, four, or anything gets greater than two, this limit will go to infinity. This will go to infinity. So error state state will go to zero. Okay, so it's the same thing, same processes and same similar result with continuous time systems. In order to increase your steady state performance, uh, what you should do is, okay, based on your type of input, you should increase the type of the system, which is technically uh, adding a, a pole at z is equal to one, which is like adding an accumulator to your system, similar to the integrator in continuous time case. And we already know that s is equal to zero is mapped to z is equal to one. So we are doing exactly the same thing in the digital domain. Okay, so there are many differences between digital and continuous time control systems. But as you can see, in terms of steady state error analysis, the idea is almost the same. Okay, this is the everything I want to talk about for uh, steady state performance with respect to uh, reference tracking. Okay, so we analyze unit step, unit ramp, and unit quadrant function and their dependence of the type of the system. In the next video, I will solve some examples to get a better idea how we can analyze or compute steady state error uh, for a specific control system.